Your watch looks swell with the new Spidel. Yes, your watch looks grand with the Spidel band. I don't understand it. Let's see. Before I start anything tonight, I am speaking to all the people who are standing in front of television stores looking at this show through the window. Please do not lean against the glass. <laughs> For you ladies and gentlemen, I want you to know that I'm appearing this evening through the carelessness of Spidell. <laughs> <laughs> Television is such a new thing, you folks do not really realize the potency of this instrument. It will have a great deal to do with the, uh, I don't know what you call it, the culture of the country. It's breaking up homes. I know a man who bought a television set six months ago. And the very first night that he bought the television set, he came home, had a dinner, went in the living room, and looked at the television set and never said a word to his wife. And for six solid months, every night, he has never said a word to his wife. He just watched the television. She got so sick and fed up that she just packed her clothes and, and she went away. She left him. He didn't even know that she had left him. <laughs> he didn't know it till last night. He was looking at his television set and he saw her wrestling. <laughs> you know, there's, there's times, I, I want to I wanna thank the press. I think the press have been so magnanimous in their reception of my meager endeavors. I don't know what to say except to say, one, one newspaper called me a middle-aged man. I was really delighted till I looked it up. <laughs> and then I found out that a middle-aged man is a man who would rather not have a good time than try to get over it. <laughs> hey, the, you gonna answer the phone? Oh, the phone? Oh, pardon me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hello? Oh, the, yeah, the Associated Press, yeah. Well, that was really my uncle. That's the whole story. Yes, that was my uncle. Well, the whole story is very strange. I came home, and my uncle was cutting out pictures of beautiful girls from a magazine. And I asked him why he was cutting the pretty girls out of that fashion magazine. That's what my uncle did. <laughs> and he looked at me surprised. He didn't know that it was a fashion magazine. <laughs> he was so surprised, he said, I thought that this was a Sears Roebuck catalog, he said. I was just sending in my order. <laughs> That's what he said. <laughs> yeah. Well, you can't blame my uncle. That's the way you got my aunt, you know. That's the way. <laughs> my goodness. <that's laughs> what a flip. Let me see here. Hello? The Queen Mary. I forgot. This is television. My next scene, I have to be in France. I'm going on the Queen Mary. Queen Mary must have had a little tug there. <laughs> I can't wait till I get to France because I have a cousin in Paris and I have a... Nephew and niece. <laughs> well, I'll be back. Wait a minute. I'm in Paris. <laughs> Here's some sugar. <laughs> she worked like a horse. That, <laughs> that is wonderful. Oh, monsieur, may I show you a table? No, thank you. I've seen the table. I've seen the table. <laughs> you could show me some of those postcards. <laughs> no, monsieur. What I mean is, are you hungry? Would you like a table? 
Well, I'm not that hungry, no. no. I'll try a couple of blades. I'll see what I can do today. Oh, yes, thank you. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> we may as well get acquainted. I'm a stranger here myself, you know. And <laughs> there must be someone home. There's a light in the window there. <laughs> What are you doing? Father? What are you doing? Oh, I'm going to, I'm going to make a cigarette. I'm going to make a cigarette uh, with one hand. I saw it in a Western movie, you know. A Western? Oh, it must have been a Western. It was on television. <laughs> <laughs> I'll sit over here. I don't, this thing is, the, uh, you know, in this country, the, Oh, I'm commencing to understand the Marshall Plan now. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Well, how do you do? <laughs> really? <laughs> oh, <laughs> champagne. Champagne, yes. a dollar champagne. Oh, you like it? Yes. You know, I have a cousin. That's why I came to Paris. My cousin waits in his champagne place, you know. Yes? Yeah, he waits in his bare feet in a big tub with a lot of grapes. And he, he walks around all day on the grapes, you know, pressing the grapes. And, but at night, he can't even walk a straight line on his way home. He's in, intoxicated. No, 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 he's all right. <laughs> but his feet are loaded, you know. <laughs> well, here you go. Sure. A boat on Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't I seen you someplace before? Perhaps, monsieur. At night I dance at the Café Rouge. You are Belita. I thought I re remember that one step you did. This, this thing here. That was so lovely that you did. Huh? That was not me. Yes. I danced like this. this. Oh, no. The step I saw you do was like that. You did something, something like that, huh? No, like this. If I could only get it to keep this up a little while. <laughs> it was like this. <laughs> oh, she had another one. I didn't know that. <laughs> oh, she wants the cigarettes back. Here they are. Here they are, miss. <laughs> See, I can't speak their language. I've had this trouble in three shows now. <laughs> well, I'll sell them myself. <laughs> Cigars and cigarettes. I'll get off this way. <laughs>
went to the hotel and changed my clothes. You know, I saw what, I saw one of those bathing girls, those French girls in one of those French bathing suits. <laughs> it's wonderful what they do with two crepe Suzettes, you know. <laughs> this guy is worse than the other guy over there. I'll take my drink to another table. <laughs> Stop! Look at your watch. Remember, when you look at your watch, they look at your watch band. <laughs> your watch looks swell with a new Spidel. Yes, your watch looks grand with a Spidel band. I thought it was you. I, it sounded like advertising the minute that you said stop. <laughs> but that won't do you any good. I told you, in television, you cannot... In television, you have to show people things on the screen. They don't always see it, but you have to show it to them anyhow. All right, all right, then I'll, I'll show them this mighty new Sir Galahad by Spidell. This Sir Galahad will make any man's watch look richer, more expensive, and will add to his wrist the look of power, of strength. Well, that may be, but it's very dull. <laughs> very dull advertising. Television is something new. It's a new medium. I'll show you. I've got it all fixed out. Waiter, will you bring your orchestra, please? Here, waiter. You see, in television, ladies and gentlemen, I must explain, the sponsor can't afford much money yet. So in television, this becomes a whole orchestra, you see. <laughs> and the conductor of our orchestra tonight is none other than maestro Sam Hearn. Samuel, I greet you. <laughs> Sam, it is my endeavor to change advertising the world over. I need your assistance. Tonight, I would like to do it in symphonic form. Mm -hmm. See? Mm -hmm. Will you follow me? Yeah, you just try to explain what I say. Ladies and gentlemen, Fidel, who makes the marvelous watch bands, the ladies and men, good advertising, you think, presents that modern symphony, the title of which is Crime Does Not Pay. Neither does television. <laughs> and what you do? The, you start, start, you start the, uh, you know, the symphony. Oh, no, no. no. No, no, that, that would be no good on this. That's all right for the Lone Ranger. <laughs> no, I tell you, I will explain. This is a little story. Mm -hmm. See, I'm going to speak of Spidell watch band, yeah. but in an interesting way. I see. The place is the living room of a beautiful mansion, outside of which there is taking place a terrific storm. <laughs> That's the idea. <laughs> I'll later tell them this is not in California so they don't get mad, you see. <laughs> now, into the house sneaks a burglar through a rusty door. I could have had him come through the window, but you can't do that on a violin, you see. <laughs> now, the burglar is coming to the house to steal one of Spidell Sagala had. I'll have to call up the sponsor and ask him what it is. <laughs> watch man, watch man, watch man. Watch man, watch man. <laughs> That's the watch man. Now, the burglar, the burglar picks up the watch man and it expands. He let go too quickly, but here's the idea. This is the silly part of the story, Sam. You must follow me. Yes. This burglar could go in any jewelry store and buy a Spidell Sagala Head watch band for $14.95. Oh. Yeah. But this burglar prefers to steal. Oh. See? Each man to his own hobby, you know? <laughs> now, in the house there is a dog. The dog is asleep. It's dark. The burglar trips over the dog and the dog howls. It's a Doberman pincher, you know. <laughs> However, the barking of the dog awakens the bird. <laughs> this spider will kill me, I know that. <laughs> Now, the burglar is asked if he wants to steal this Fidel, which is a beautiful, a beautiful watch band, you know. 
No, no, it's much more beautiful. <laughs> this watch band is much more beautiful. No, it's not much more beautiful. <laughs> well, that's that thought. That's right, that. You see, anyhow, anyhow, this is very interesting for you. The woman who owns the house comes into the house very quietly. That was perfect. Now, <laughs> she, she comes in. She comes in the house. She is still dizzy from dancing a square dance in a roundhouse. You know what I mean? <laughs> and she sees the burglar. And, and being a woman, she says, Ah, you son of a gun. <laughs> I didn't say that. No. <laughs> but however, this is very interesting. This is very, very interesting. You see? The girl. The woman of the house says to the burglar, you have come here to steal my father's Sagala head watch band because you know that a watch looks grand with a Spidel band. Not till then do we know that she is a niece of Spidel. <laughs> a struggle happens between the two. And then a shot is heard. It's him shooting her. Then she shoots him. They both die. It saves them right for advertising. <laughs> However, the symphony finishes, well, very happily. It's a happy ending. It, no, it, it, it's not that happy. It's, uh, I'm just you, you, The idea is that the bird marries the dog. It's an unusual thing. And the bird at the wedding gives the dog a present of a Spidel watch band. Oh. Because it's a watchdog. <laughs> <laughs> That's the end. That's the end. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> that, ladies and gentlemen, that, that is what I call television advertising. I do not think that it will sell uh, uh, many watch bands, but it ought to sell a lot of violins. <laughs> but, uh, this doesn't stop it. They get married, but it's a modern marriage and it's a failure. <laughs> and they decide, they decide to separate. So they divide the house. They divide the house equally. She gets the inside and he gets the outside. <laughs> Turn that thing off. Here, don't shut that off. Don't I listen to him every week. He's very funny. That guy there. What is... Why do you turn him off? What can I do for you? Do you have any of those new long-playing records? Long-playing records? I don't know. Yes. Here's one. Here's one should play about a month. There. Take it from you. Take it from you, say. Say, uh, I'd like to see what you have in the guitar. Guitar? How about an electric guitar? Oh, an electric guitar? Yeah. Well, how do you play it? Well, it doesn't play. It just makes toast. You know it. <laughs> Would you like to see it? Here's an interesting thing you might like. This is an idea of my own. This is a symbol made of felt. A symbol made of felt? Yeah, feel it. Feel it. Felt it. It's felt it. It's, uh, I'll tell you, it's for musicians who like to practice in public libraries. <laughs> just an idea, and I don't say it's any good. Hey! Hey! Who is that? Who is that? Why, that's one of the biggest popular singers today. Don't tell me that's Desi Pinza, because I saw, I saw of North Atlantic. No! Why, that's Mel Torme, the MGM star. <laughs> Mel Torme? Mel Torme, what is it? Sounds like a French disease. How do you do? Hello, how are you? Say, do you have any Perry Como records? Perry Como records? Yeah. Uh-huh. Yes, I have one here with 85% of the caffeine removed. Yeah. <laughs> this is, that's the Perry Como, that's his latest record. Ah, wonderful. Yes. <laughs> hey, hey, come here, hey. Hey, come here, Mr. Torme, come here. Are you really Mel Torme? Yeah, that's right. Are you the fellow, like, Mel Torme? Yeah. Do you know that this was made specially for you? We're going to put it in the window. What is that thing? This is a velvet foghorn. <laughs> uh, do you like it? No, no, no. It's made like for you, Leo. Solomon thought it would be good. <laughs> the, uh, I, 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 
I doubt if I can use it. Do you have any tuning forks? I could use a tuning fork. No, we're all we're all out of them. There's been a big run on tuning forks this year. Really? Yes, I, I have a fork here. I'd like to show it to you. This is very interesting. This is a fork. It's not a tuning fork, you know. It's um, it's an invention of mine. It's a fork for eating spaghetti. You see what it does? It's uh, <laughs> Did you see that? No, no, no. That Wouldn't one, be that one clogged my throat. I think, well, yeah, I'm a singer. All right. I just I, I'm, I'm a singer. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I sing. Do you sing? Oh, sure. I didn't know that. Sure. Climb upon my knee, sunny boy. Climb upon my knee, sunny boy. Hard, you know. All right, but it hardly seems worth the trip. Yes. <laughs> I didn't want you to take me. Would you mind getting up just a minute? Oh, okay. <laughs> can, I, can I help you? Now I know why Jolson is singing again. He can't get up. <laughs> Thank you, you Bert. Listen, uh -huh. for doing that wonderful deed, for doing what you just did, yes. I will make you the biggest singer in television. Me the biggest singer in television? Yes, I really wonderful. mean that. Yes, I really shall make you. You've got to do exactly. You see, television, everything is visual. I see. You see, I'm most thing is just saying the thing. I see. I got a great idea. You sneak around to Bing Crosby, Jimmy. You've heard of it? Yeah, I've heard of it. You go to Bing Crosby's house, and he's got a set of lyrics over there called White Christmas. <laughs> you steal the lyrics. Now, here's what you do. Right before you go on television, when you lay in the song, White Christmas, you fill your moat, your moat here, you see. <laughs> moat. <laughs> That's from playing jokes in one second, and I'm done. <laughs> You fill your mouth is really what I wanted to say, because I'm from further up north. Uh, you fill your mouth with, with soap chips. Soap chips? Yes, you put soap chips in your mouth, and then you come out and, and while you are singing White Christmas, you snow all over the audience. <laughs> this is my own idea. Yeah, well, no, I, uh, that's not particularly my type of song. You see, well, I, I, I like uh, more jumpy things. Would you like to hear of Mrs. Careless Hands? Would I like to hear careless hands? Of course, I'm a different school than you, but that sounds like very, very poor English. <laughs> you mean, would I like to see careless no, hands? No, no, huh? no. Oh, you see, careless hands is a song. I sing a song. Oh. Careless hands. Oh, well, what about it? Well, would you like to hear it? Would I like to hear, yeah. hear it? Yeah. Would you like to hear careless hands? No, not necessarily. No. <laughs> Incidentally, all you folks out there, we need a little bit of help in the hand clapping department. Don't be bashful, join in. Lud, it's all you. Everybody. That's not everybody. Come on, let's hear from you. I let my heart fall into careless hands. Careless hands broke my heart in two. You held my dreams like worthless grains of sand. Careless hands don't care when dreams slip through. I brought you joy, baby, I loved you so. But all that sunshine didn't make the roses grow. Oh, if you don't change, Someday you'll know the sound of careless hands can't hold on to love. Careless hands broke my heart in two. Ah! You held my dreams like worthless grains of sand. Careless hands don't care when dreams slip through. I brought you joy, baby, I loved you so. But all that sunshine didn't make the roses grow. If you don't change, someday you'll know the sorrow of careless hands 
can't hold on to love. Careless hands, just the folks up in front, can't hold on to love. Careless hands, now all you people back there in Death Valley, come on. Awful. Once again, I want to present our players in probably the most unusual of all plays. It starts out somewhat like the symphony, except this is a drama. And as the curtain rises on it, there is a terrific storm raging off the east coast of Africa. But that makes no difference to us because our play takes place in Boston. <laughs> very, very, very interesting. The leading man, his name is Alfred. Now, Alfred lost his mother and father when he was 12 years of age. What a crap game. <laughs> this is very much, he falls in love with a girl named Emily. He falls in love with Emily. She comes from a fastidious family. By that I mean that her father was fast and her mother was hideous. But it's very interesting. It's very interesting. She wants to take him home to meet her parents and they jump on a bus. And she says, Emily says to the bus driver, says that this bus stops at the wall of Astoria. And the bus driver says, no, that's much too expensive. We just keep it in a garage. <laughs> now, when she gets home that night, there is a doctor there treating her mother. And as the father comes in, the daughter says, father, do you know that mother has either the measles or the mumps? The doctor doesn't know. And the father says, well, we'll know by tomorrow morning she will either break out or shut up. <laughs> Seven years pass by. And Alfred and his girl, Emily, get married. It's just as well because they didn't get along anyhow, you know? <laughs> now, it, it, right here, it is... I'm interrupted. Oh, that's old fashioned, seven things. <laughs> I just have to... <laughs> That looks like a trick of Spidell to get me off the stage. <laughs> but I've got one more joke to tell, and I'm going to tell it. Now, after they're married, she wants her husband to go in the movies, and he says, I do not want to go in the movies. And she says, you know, says, no. Then her father comes and says, you must go in the movies. And he says, I don't want to go in the movies. Look what happens in the movies. One day you're kissing Lana Taylor, one day you're kissing Joan Crawford, another day you're kissing Jennifer Jones, and the next day you're a has-been. And the father says, yes, but look where you has been. <laughs> well, I, I can't show you the show tonight, but this is what you'll see next week. Just about... <laughs> Spidell makes watch bands for ladies, too. Get them tomorrow at your favorite jewel. I let him do that. He doesn't know we're off the air. <laughs> seen next week at the same time on this same station. Ed's guest will be Dinah Shore. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.